What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. Zemi Smart makes a set of Zigbee curtain motors that function similarly to the popular SwitchBot curtain motors, and they were kind enough to send me a set to test out with Home Assistant. In this video, I'm going to show you some of their basic features and tell you how they compare with SwitchBot. The Zemismart Super Curtain Robot Motors have a long rectangular body with a rubber drive wheel at one end. On the other end, on the front side, are three control buttons, forward, backward, and stop. On the end, you also have a power switch, a charging port, and an LED indicator, as well as a pairing button. There's also a fixed lock button, but I actually have no idea what it's used for. And don't want to break something by pressing it, but I'm guessing that it locks the motor from spinning if you need to for some reason. The kit comes with an 8.4 volt USB power adapter for charging the 3000 milliamp hour battery, so you can't just use any USB charger. Also, optionally, it can come with a solar panel that can be permanently connected to the charge port to keep it continuously charging using the sun. However, it didn't come with any great mounting options for that solar panel except for some adhesive tape. As far as installation hardware for the different types of curtains, it comes with two different sized U-rail attachments, an I-rail attachment, and a rod attachment. The hardware is made of plastic and is very flexible. It feels cheap and light in your hand, which may be a bad thing, but it also could be a good thing if it's meant to be shock absorbing, depending on the loading of the motor with your curtains. It also comes with an RF remote for manual control, as well as for setting the open and closed positions of the motor. I should also mention the price of this device. At the time of making this video, you can pick up the standard model of robot curtain for $75 from the Zemi Smart store, where the SwitchBot costs around $99. With the SwitchBot, you're also required to get the SwitchBot hub in order to make the motors function properly together and for them to work with most smart home platforms. Obviously with the Zemi Smart ones, you need to have a Zigbee hub. Installing the rod attachments isn't too difficult if you just follow the instructions, but it's definitely more complicated than the SwitchBot. For the rod ring, you have to remove an R-clip, extract the roller shaft and the roller, clip the ring onto your curtain rod, and then carefully reinstall the shaft and roller followed by the R-clip. This did cause me to drop the roller a few times, and if you lose that or the R-clip, you're toast. Once installed, tightening up the drive wheel against the rod wasn't too difficult, similarly to how the SwitchBot is done, but if you want to loosen it up, you need a screwdriver to back it out. In my opinion, they could have spent a bit more time in this area with the design of that hardware. In fact, SwitchBot has actually done upgrades to that area of their device, which I'll show you in a future video. Once installed, you just have to pair the remote to the device and then use the remote to set the open and closed positions of it. After that, you're done. I also use those adhesive strips to mount the solar panel directly to the body of the motor in such a way that it's gonna receive sunlight. When it comes to the actual operation of the motor, here's where you see it start to fall a bit short of the SwitchBot. It's where you see the cheaper quality come into play. First off, the SwitchBot could handle small step changes in the size of the curtain rod, like if you're using a, a telescoping extendable curtain rod, but the Zemi Smart cannot at all. Even a small groove in the rod poses an issue for this device and ends up getting stuck. I think this is part of the small size of a roller in that ring hardware, but it may also be because the drive motor isn't tensioned as well against the rod as with the SwitchBot. Next, when the motor is moving across the rod and it encounters any resistance, either from something on the rod or from the curtains just pulling against it, you can see the rod hardware start to flex as tension is put on it. It's kind of scary, but as I mentioned before, maybe the hardware is designed to be flexible to absorb this kind of energy. Besides this though, the Zempi Smart motors are much less loud than the SwitchBots and a lot less annoying when you're hearing them open and close. I installed my Zempi Smart motors on some curtains that are a bit heavier than the ones that you saw in my SwitchBot video and they still make far less noise. So that was a pleasant surprise. Adding this device to Home Assistant is where I ran into trouble. I added it to ZHA, Zigbee Home Automation, but 
there were no entities displayed at all. Obviously this device isn't supported, or at least not yet, in ZHA. I decided then to switch my test setup over to ZigBee to MQTT to give that a shot because I understand that it's got a lot more compatibility than ZHA. Sure enough, this device showed up in Z2M without any issue. Now, this is my first time using Z2M and it sure is ugly, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that exposed in Z2M were open, close, and stop controls, a position control, a motor speed option, and an entity that displayed the link quality. I tested out the motor speed option, but it didn't actually seem to change the speed, so it may be something that's available for slightly different models of this Zigbee curtain. In Zigbee to MQTT, you can also invert the cover position. So if it says opened, but it really should say closed, you can use that to change that. So all of these controls are in Zigbee to MQTT, but in the MQTT integration, and I'm using Mosquito as my broker, not all of these things actually come through to the device page. This may be standard and normal, but I'm not sure this is my first time using Zigbee to MQTT. In that device page, you only get open, close, stop, set position, and the link quality. One thing that's missing that didn't show up in either Zigbee to MQTT or in the MQTT integration is the battery percentage. To me, that's a big problem because if you're using solar panels, you really wanna know if they're working and there's no way to tell what the battery percentage is. If you have more than one of these curtain robots, they're gonna show up as two different devices at Home Assistant. So if you wanna get them to work together, you have to use some sort of automation or script. So these motors are cheaper than SwitchBot and they do use Zigbee rather than Bluetooth so they don't need their own special hub if you already have Zigbee set up with Home Assistant. But they do come with some sacrifices compared to the SwitchBot as you could probably see. I've been using these for a few weeks now and they do work pretty flawlessly but it is kind of frustrating that I had to use Zigbee to MQTT. I suppose I could just switch everything over to Z2M but we'll see. Anyway, that's pretty much it. If there's anything I didn't cover, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. If you wanna see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when my next video comes out. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya. Press start.